So hello guys, welcome back. So in today's video, we'll take up this problem first. So this question, in the question, we have a smooth horizontal surface bounded by vertical walls forming an isosceles triangle ABC. Uh, the sides BC and AB are equal to 4 meters and the angle ABC is much smaller than 1. So this is a very small angle. A small washer is located at the middle of wall AC and uh, the washer is given a velocity of 3 meters per second directed at an angle alpha to the vertical. Uh, estimate thrice the time between the successive impacts of washer on the wall AC. Okay, so this washer will collide and you know after some time it will come back and hit AC. We need to find the time difference um, or the time taken for this process. Okay, okay, and the question and uh, it's mentioned that consider the impacts of the washer on the walls to be perfectly elastic. Okay, so this question is exactly similar to a problem that uh, I've already done in the Pathfinder optics playlist so in that question we had like a cone and we had to and we projected a ball uh, at some particular angle and we and uh, you know the collisions with the cone were supposed to be elastic and we had to count the number of collisions okay so this problem is also similar to that so i'm going to use the result which we talked about in that video so basically the idea was that uh, if we you know, consider the elastic collisions one by one when then of course we have to follow the angle of incidence equals angle of reflection rule and then the thing is we have to count the number of collisions um, but instead of doing that if we take consider uh, these two uh, sides as two plane mirrors if we take the Im image of this mirror about the first mirror it will look something like this first of all right uh, and if this angle is some theta let's say this angle will also be theta so if we keep taking the mirror image of the mirrors something like this so i discussed it in that video why we do this and if we keep drawing mirrors like this then then the thing is we don't have to consider the zigzag motion of the particle instead we can just draw it as a straight line okay and uh, another thing we discussed in that video is that the angle the angle at which the particle intersects one of these fake mirrors so if this is the normal of this mirror and this angle is let's say i it's the same angle i with which the particle would have intercepted the mirror if we had considered the reflection so all these were talked about in that video you guys can check it out okay but yeah so basically if we use that result then the thing is um, the particle will retrace its path when it is perpendicular to one of the mirrors okay and um, so now we have a right triangle that looks something like this okay this being the initial point uh, and this is the starting point and uh, it was given that the particle was projected with 30 with the vertical so this angle would be 60 okay so now this distance is actually the altitude of this triangle so if this is 4 um, and uh, the thing is um, uh, as this angle is given to be a very small angle, we can approximately take the altitude to be 4 meters as well. Right? You can even uh, look at it using Pythagoras. So as the angle B is much extremely small, this side length will be extremely tiny. So even using Pythagoras, this side length uh, would approximately just turn out to be 4 meters. So the base of this triangle would be approximately 4 meters. So this distance over here is going to be 2 meters. Okay? So the distance traveled by the particle before it intercepts one of the mirrors perpendicularly is going to be 2 meters. And it's given that the speed of the particle is 3 meters per second. So the time it takes to go 2 meters in this direction and come back 2 meters is actually 4 by 3. Okay, so the delta T is going to be 4 by 3 seconds. Mm, what they wanted is what is 3 times the delta T. So 3 delta T is just 4. So that's the answer. So uh, this particular trick I have talked about in that video. Why are we taking the reflection of a mirror about the other mirror? And uh, okay, how are we able to replace the zigzag pattern with a straight line? So I've talked about it in that video. So just check it out. Okay. And uh, yeah, that's this problem. So we have this problem over here in which we have two small balls of different masses. And it rotates around a vertical axis O, O1. Uh, with a constant angular velocity the thread connecting the balls is this is three times longer than the thread attached to the upper ball okay so basically if this length is l uh, this length is 3l the threads form an angle gamma and phi with the vertical axis find thrice the ratio of the tension forces of the 
upper and lower thread. So we have to find three times T uh, in the upper thread, let's call it T1 and tension in the lower thread. OK, so this is what we have to find. OK, so once again, if this length is 3L, this length would be L. In order for writing down the centrifugal forces, we would need the X distances, right? So let's just calculate them. So if this is ball 1, this is ball 2. This distance would be L sine gamma, which is 3L by phi. And this distance would be 3L by phi plus 3L sine phi, which is 12L by phi. So this is 15 by phi, which is 3L. So this distance would be 3L. OK, so for the first, we'll draw the force triangle for mass number 2. So we'll have the centrifugal force M2 omega squared 3L. Uh, then we'll have the force of gravity acting vertically downwards, which is, M, which is M2G. Then we'll have the tension force T2 acting at an angle of phi from the vertical. Okay, This is the force triangle for uh, mass M2. Now what we'll do is we'll draw the force triangle for both 2 and 1 taken together. Uh, so in this case, T1 would be external force. Then we have force of gravity acting on both the balls. Uh, we'll consider them as M1 plus M2 into G. And then we'll consider the horizontal centrifugal force on both of them. And we'll add them together. OK, so now we'll draw the force triangle with these three forces. So that will also be a right triangle. On this side, we'll have the tension force T1. And uh, here we'll have the total centrifugal force uh, on 1 and 2 both. So that would be M1 omega squared 3L by phi plus M2 omega squared 3L. And on the vertical side, we'll take their combined gravity, which is M1 plus M2 into G. And um, T1 makes an angle, gamma with the vertical. Now, another thing you need to observe is that sine gamma is 3 by phi, sine phi is 4 by phi. So if this angle is phi, this angle would be gamma. And uh, if this angle is gamma on this triangle, this angle would be phi, right? Um, this is because gamma and phi, if you add them together, it will be 90 degrees. OK, so in now the thing is we have two similar triangles. Now it's just a bit calculative. So the thing is, if you take tan phi in the first triangle, on the left side, we have 3 omega square L by G. And on the right hand side, OK, and this is equal to tan phi, which is 4 by 3. So wherever we see 3 omega square L by G, we'll just put 4 by 3. OK, so now these are two similar triangles. We'll take their ratios. So we want T1 by T2. So T1 divided by T2 equals. So we'll do, so this side divided by this side equals this side divided by this side. Okay, this is because the angles are flipped. So you have to be careful when you're taking the ratios. So we have uh, M1 plus M2 into G divided by M2 omega squared 3L. So here, as you can see, there is an omega square 3L by G. So this is going to be 3 by 4. Right, so instead of this, we can write it as 3 by 4. Okay, so this is going to be m1 by m2 plus 1 into 3 by 4. Now, this is also equal to the this big centrifugal term. Now, here the thing is, we can directly write uh, th 3 omega square L as 4G by 3. So this will be 4M1G by 15 plus 4 by 3 M2G. And this whole thing divided by m2g okay and uh, now once again we'll divide so this will become 4 by 15 m1 by m2 and uh, this thing becomes 4 by 3 okay so this is basically the ratio now so we'll just equate these two to find out m1 by m2 first 3 by 4 m1 by m2 minus 4 by 15 m1 by m2 equals 4 by 3 minus 3 by 4 so this becomes 45 minus 16, so 29 divided by 60 m1 by m2. And this is 16 minus 9, 7 divided by 12. So these cancel out. And we get m1 by m2 as 35 by 29. Now we can put it into this first equation. So we get t1 by t2 as 3 by 4 times 1 plus m1 by m2. So if I add 35 and 29, I get 64 uh, and then we have divided by 29. So this cancels out with this. So this is going to be 48 divided by 29. 
okay and uh, we wanted three times this value so the answer is going to be three times 48 divided by 29 and this turns out to be 4.9655 and i guess this was an integer type section so rounded off this would be five okay so if i didn't make any calculation mistake this should be correct all right so yeah that's it for today's video guys um i'll bring more videos in the future so if you enjoyed make sure to like that's it thanks for watching